Hi everyone, it's Brady with Street Smart. I have Matt Kringle here and we're gonna go through some of the key differences between the automated flagger device like you see behind me, as well as some of the other portable traffic signal options we offer nationwide for rental. So Matt is our nationwide rental and sales expert for these devices. Thanks for joining me, Matt. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's dive right in. We've obviously seen an explosion over the last year, year to two years on the demand for these automated flaggers. So Matt, a couple questions. Uh, why the explosion in demand nationally for them? And if you could walk us through kind of the ease of use on these uh, automated flaggers. Yeah, and, and I think they go hand in hand. And the explosion is, is really because of really a lack of labor force, a uh, combination of lack of labor force and, and safety. Um, to be able to have a substantial piece of equipment with LED lights and signs in, in a gate arm uh, when compared to a, a person standing there holding a stop, a stop sign on the side of the road, um, there's a, a substantial factor in, in visualization and in, in, in drawing your eyes to, to this rather than a person which you may or not be able to see. Um, labor force and safety are, are two big aspects to that and in, in keeping that flagger off the side of the road um, and, and controlling a, a device rather than standing in the road trying to stop traffic. Uh, right. it, it's, it, they've, speak, they've spoken for themselves. Okay. Um, obviously, there's a variety of different manufacturers that are producing all of the equipment we're going to be talking about today. These are from North American Traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to just talk about, Matt, what, what's the typical use case for these? Is it long duration jobs or temporary lane closures? What is, what is the use for these automated flaggers? Yeah, AFADs, and, and let me just say that it, it, the acronym for an AFAD is an Automated Flagging Assistance Device. It's kind of a one trick pony. Um, the bread and butter is, is literally getting that flagger off the roadway and getting a piece of equipment on the roadway in their place. However, that person still has to stand there and, and control the device. They have to see both ends. Um, and, and really it's bread and butter is lane closure scenarios where you used to have two flaggers standing there all day and, and alternating that traffic. You can now remove one of those flaggers or remove both of those flaggers from um, that unsafe work zone and you can replace it with this equipment uh, and have one person flagging there um, with, with a, re a wireless remote to control both ends of traffic. Show the um, tight shot of that um, remote just to show you the simplicity of, of the design. Talk about that. How far away can I be from the unit uh, to, to wirelessly communicate with it? Yeah, and, and it's going to vary depending on a little bit from manufacturer, but generally speaking you get about a thousand feet away um, from the device with your wireless control. In, in all manufacturers, um, what's nice about it is they all function the same. They all have a wireless remote. Um, the gate arm goes up and down. It's very simple. It's very direct. Um, and, and there's the simplicity is key here. Mm -hmm. um, we, we want simplicity in the user end, uh, the person that's controlling it, and we want simplicity on the driver pulling up to it, understanding what the function is, um, and, and what they need to do when they approach the work zone. Okay. Um, and, and really all it is, is it's an up and down button. It's letting the traffic know um, you're okay to go. Proceed with caution. Uh, and, and conversely, when you want traffic to, to stop, you know, you're, the other side has come through and, and um, we're, we're stopping traffic. It's just the opposite. It's, it's, it's gate down. Um, very simple, very effective, getting the flagger off the roadway um, and, and replacing it with, with something more substantial and safer. So just so I'm clear, these two units are obviously synced with one another. As the gate arm is going up on this one, it's already down on the other end, right? So Correct. there's some built-in logic. The operator yeah. isn't having to remember to do both ends. Yeah, both ends, they cannot both go up at one time. So there's a safety factor built into these machines. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the one person, and, and I want to be clear that the one person must have line of sight to, to see both ends. You can't be standing at one end and, and have a have the other end around the corner where you can't see if that's the case you do need a second flagger there mm -hmm. um, so you do need line of sight you cannot set these up and walk away they cannot run autonomously um, to answer your question Brady a little bit earlier they're built for 
um, shorter duration jobs daily. Um, Overnight only if there's somebody there working them overnight. Mm -hmm. You cannot set them up and walk away. That's a federal standard. Um, so they're really built to just that daily short term, um, you know, quick work zone stuff where yeah. maybe maybe they're trimming trees, maybe they're backing trucks in and out of a work zone. Something mm -hmm. simple, fast, daily is really these bread and butter. Okay. One last question. Uh, if I'm going to hook these up to my truck and go set them out on a job site, what is the kind of a process of hooking them up to your truck and realistically how long does it take me to set up that lane closure? Yeah, it is pretty simple. Um, all manufacturers, um, because because they're used in so many different states and in countries, provinces, yep. um, they give you the ability to either tandem tow them, basically trailer front, trailer back, or to nest them, which is basically um, create one unit, one uh, towable unit, so you can get away from um, the actual tandem tow, which some states don't allow. Mm -hmm. So to actually set these up uh, or, or, or pull them behind a truck, they're, they're all very light. Uh, they're meant to be light, so you can quickly hook them up, detach them from your vehicle, and deploy them on the side of the road. You, you need to be able to physically move them around a little bit, depending on the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. um, so they're purpose-built to be light uh, and nimble, hooked together and unhooked quickly, so you can drop one at one end, go drop the other end and, and away you go. I mean, depending on the lay of the land and the setup, it could take you five to 10 to 15 minutes to, to drop and, and be up and running. Okay, so that quickly. Yeah. That's good. And Matt called out, but these are trailer mounted. Um, you're not having to lift them in and out of the back of your pickup truck or anything like that. So um, what is the height, approximate height uh, from the top to the ground? They're about 11 feet. Okay, all right, good. Um, Again, available for rent or purchase nationwide from Street Smart, a variety of different manufacturers that we represent. Um, so thanks for showing us about the AFADs, Matt. Sure. And we're gonna move on now to the cart style traffic signals. Okay, now that we've learned a lot about automated flaggers and obviously a lot of the requirements around the use for those and some of the use cases, um, we're going to hit on our uh, cart style portable traffic signals as well as our full size portable traffic signals. Uh, some of the common uses for those, some of the additional um, options and upgrades you can attach to these devices uh, to accomplish your traffic safety needs. So again, um, Matt, if you could just kind of walk us through what we're looking at here and hit on the, I guess, most common applications where these cart style signals are used, please. Sure. Um, well, like Brady mentioned, we're, we're looking at more of a cart style signal here. Um, it, its original kind of use and intention was really a short-term um, daily operation, again, to get those flaggers off the road uh, and to replace them with something that's um, automated, um, you know, electronic, and, and something that you can literally walk away from and, and let the machines handle traffic from a safety perspective. Um, so again, these are kind of the little brother to what I call the big brother. Um, these happen to be um, the same manufacturer, so um, they can be compatible together. But really what these um, originally kind of came from is, is a lane closure scenario, the daily, the short term stuff, the, the bridge maintenance crews, the, um, the tree trimming crews, the guys that are going out during the day, closing a lane, taking a lane, uh, doing maintenance on that bridge and then coming back you know, every night. Mm -hmm. Can they stay out overnight? Sure, they'll run autonomously for about seven days or so with no solar uh, on a full charge, but they're really uh, meant for that shorter duration because of their smaller battery, ba battery banks. Right. Um, and, and just real quick, as we see them, you know, you can see their deployed version. So uh, again, um, they're substantial when it comes to um, their visibility as you drive up on them. And then uh, we have one cranked down just, just for comparison so you can kind of see how they travel. Right, okay. Um, you brought two of them in here for a reason. Talk about uh, typical deployment. So if we're doing, let's say, uh, a daily lane closure for a lot of tree trimming work, what, is, what does that look like as the motorist is approaching? What's the setup? So uh, typically you always have to have two heads per direction of traffic. So we would use these in a four cart array, um, two at this end of the work zone and two at the other end of the work zone, all communicating together. Um, these are actually working, um, I guess, 
apart from each other, opposite to each other, but you'd have two on one side and, and two on the other. And in this particular setup actually comes in an enclosed trailer. Um, they all force it in the enclosed trailer. You can plug them in and charge them. You can store them there. Um, and, and if you're hooked up to that truck and you're deploying, you know, it might take you 15, 20, 30 minutes, depending on, again, the lay of the land, mm -hmm. um, the distance between the two to really get the four carts out, get your lane closure set up, your signage up, and, mm -hmm. and away you go. Okay. Um, you want to maybe talk about um, how far apart can you space these things and still have them talk to each other? Sure. The little signals, uh, just like the big signals, um, all have the, the 900 megahertz radios in them, um, and they're good for up to about a mile. So um, you don't need line of sight with these uh, like you do with an AFAD because, again, you need to physically control that AFAD, whereas um, the little cart style signals, you can still walk them up, or excuse me, set them up, walk away, mm -hmm. and have them run completely autonomously. Okay. So I would imagine if, if you have them a mile apart, you can program them to allow the traffic to clear the work zone and, and, and the other ones change the correct uh, color? Yep, yep, yep. They're, they're programmable, again, all the way up to everything their big brother can do mm -hmm. um, as far as programming. And um, really, the bread and butter to these cart style signals is the lane closure scenario. There's a few other um, situations that we've run these smaller signals in, mm -hmm. um, but the bread and butter is really still that lane closure operation. Okay. Um, how much do they weigh and how do you move them around? Well, they're about maybe 400 pounds a piece, roughly. Uh, and again, um, depending on what we're doing with them, um, if they are going from job to job as a full four pack setup, mm -hmm. we roll them in and out of the trailer. Um, they actually act as kind of like a wheelbarrow um, where we literally lift them up and, and, and roll them around like we would a wheelbarrow. Okay. Um, or sometimes we palletize them to, to send them off to, you know, different parking lot jobs or, or one-off situations. Yeah, okay. Um, lastly, what can I add on to these things in terms of additional features, uh, sensors or detectors, anything like that? Yeah, typically uh, when we start getting into, you know, anything lane closure or anything traffic detecting, we, we always want to you know, add vehicle detection on them. It's almost, it's not a must, but it's something we always encourage to really keep yeah. traffic flowing properly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, again, because they're daily operation or they're really focused on that short-term daily stuff, you shouldn't need to add too much more than just, you know, your, your standard Doppler detectors. Okay. Because in theory, you're always on site with the equipment while it's working. Right, okay. Um, I, sorry, one final question. I know we've been asked, can you um, sync up a wireless controller with these cart style signals? Yes, you can. Um, I, I would like to touch on a couple things you can do with these in, in a couple different scenarios we've had these in. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can hook up a, a wireless manual remote, which means you can control the signals from a distance, from you know a thousand feet away. Um, we've used that in a couple different scenarios, one of which, um, you know, like a, a dump site, a, an actual city dump site where the person in the um, control hut, if you will, mm -hmm. wants to be able to control those trucks coming in and out. Uh, there's a flow of traffic and they need to weigh in and weigh out and um, the signals have helped them get in and out. Um, conversely, we've had them in parking ramps where we've shut one lane down coming in and out of parking ramps. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's usually done automatically, but if you need to have somebody stand there controlled traffic in and out, you can do that. So mm -hmm. um, what's nice is the height goes up and down, um, so you can get them in these lower parking ramps. You don't need to fully deploy them all the way up to their you know, 12 foot height or uh, whatever they may be. Um, and, and one more thing I want to clarify is I, I see this in a lot of um, permanent specifications is that um, the the misconception on the cart styles is that you can put you know one cart out there to you know handle a side road or one cart out there on a six month job to act as where that post mount permanent traffic signal used to sit well now they want to put a cart style and act as a post mount and I just want everyone to be aware the, the reality of the battery life of these units aren't meant for three, six, nine, ten month jobs. They're really small battery banks. They're meant for short term operation. 
Um, and, and the way we get away with long-term jobs and parking ramps and in dump sites and stuff like that is because we physically plug them in for the duration of the job. They've got onboard smart chargers where we can plug them in and leave them. Yeah. However, if you're on a six month site out in the middle of nowhere where you're trying to act, uh, trying to have this cart act as a, a post mount, whatever it may be, turn head or pad head, they're just not designed to do that. So there's other, yeah. there's other things that we get into when we start talking about um, permanent or long-term applications when it comes to the carts. Great, all right, well thank you, great overview. Um, I just thought of something as you said, those side roads. Um, DADS, so driveway assistance devices. Do um, you want to hit on that real quick? I know there's probably some tie-ins with the uh, larger size signal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so talk about driveway assistance devices and, and what that even means. Yeah, uh, well, a DAD, as Brady just alluded to, the acronym is a driveway assistance device. And, and really, that's exactly what it is, and, and that's all it is, is it's meant to handle, um, basically, if you can picture this head and turn it sideways with, with, with an arrow going each direction, and all it's doing is working with the mainline signals to let traffic know, or to let that one driveway or that one house know which way they can safely yield into the direction of that traffic is already moving. Mm -hmm. So they put it on driveways so it doesn't take up an entire phase. In other words, it's already just working with the directional phase that the big signals are going in. So a car can, you know, a car can pull out of its driveway and know which way traffic is going and yield into that direction of traffic safely yep. rather than wasting a whole phase. Right. And I do want to say that the misconception is that you can put that dad device in front of a business entrance or a side road. That's really not what they're meant to do because you may have one, you may have one vehicle that wants to go left and you may have three vehicles that want to go right and they have to wait for this guy to go left before these guys can go right. It's just inefficient. It's really just a one trick pony that's meant for driveways and driveways only if you want to keep the efficiency. Okay, good. I know we can get down a rabbit hole with those things, but I think the big thing is just uh, to raise the awareness for people so they know there are options that exist. Right. Because obviously um, that's, that creates a pretty unsafe scenario when somebody's coming out of their driveway and they might be going right into a, an active work zone. Right. So cool. Thank you for hitting on that. All right, we are going to move to our final product, the larger big brother, as Matt likes to call them, uh, full-size portable traffic signals. All right, so Matt, we've gone through the automated flaggers, the cart style. Uh, portable traffic signals. Um, let's talk about the larger, big brother as you call it, uh, full-size portable traffic signal. If you want to walk us through kind of the typical use cases on who's renting these or buying them, what types of jobs they're on, and kind of the core functionality of this product. Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, this product started probably 30 years ago with a couple different manufacturers. And, and again, we get back to this um, bread and butter of, of uh, lane closures and, and getting those flaggers off the road. And, and, and it started to become really inefficient many, many years ago to have um, flaggers overnight, long-term jobs, uh, even, even some unintended consequences of, you know, daily operations that turn into overnight, that turn into um, you know, multiple weeks, and they needed a solution to, again, for safety and monetary reasons, to get yep. people off the road and get equipment there to automate traffic and, and alternate that traffic. Okay. Um, so this has been around, it's not a new technology, although a lot of some of these things are, are newer when compared to where the traffic signals come from. Um, mm -hmm. the, the technology has come a, lot of, a long way in maybe the 30 years that this uh, that we've been using these devices. Okay, so obviously for today's uh, video here, we couldn't deploy this thing inside, but can you talk about what it looks like when it is set up and maybe how long it takes to set up a, a pair of these uh, in a work zone? Yeah, in, in a, like a lot of the equipment, um, you, you hook up to a pickup truck, you tow it around, it's all trailer based. Um, they're tandem towable, so one truck can pull both units. Um, and, and they meet a federal standard that a, a permanent sig signal would meet. You know, that you have to be um, 17 plus feet above the roadway, uh, your, your lower head. So um, as it sits out 
uh, as it sits on the side of the road and deploys, the upper arm goes up to um, that main head over the mainline traffic, uh, over the center lane, uh, while there's a second head at the eight foot level on the, on the mainline mast, uh, again, to get your two heads per direction of traffic, which is a federal standard. Yep. Okay. So setup time is usually, again, depending on the layout and, and what you have going on, it could be anywhere from 15 to 25, 30 minutes, depending on the lay of the land and, and what else is going on. Sure. Um, sometimes when you tell people they're solar powered, they think back to their eighth grade algebra class when their calculator didn't you know, work very often because that little solar panel. Talk about what solar powered means to this particular device and what the battery bank is consists of. Yeah, in, in a, a lot of you know, the, the original form of, of portable traffic signals also came because you didn't have power out mm -hmm. uh, in, in the middle of nowhere, South or North Dakota, just picking a random state. But um, mm -hmm. so you needed to have battery banks and then solar backup. So most traffic signals nowadays uh, have large battery banks, anywhere from 12 to 16 six volt batteries, anywhere from three to 500 watts of solar. Uh, and, and these trailers, the big overhead trailers, I always call the big brothers, um, are used to going, you know, several, several months at a time uh, during the summer months. You know, it, it, it really is a walk em, or set them up and walk away scenario with these things. It could be a month, it could be six months before you ever have to check in on them, you know, check batteries, get a charge and stuff like that. So they've become really efficient. Sure. What have you seen, Matt, in the last maybe couple of years in terms of um, governmental entities in particular, in particularly allowing these on jobs? Yeah, the, the reliability and the quality of, of, you know, just the radio communication and the lack of interference that we, you know, we used to see that we don't see anymore um, has come a long way in, in the trust level because of that reliability has, has grown infinitely in the past even 10 years mm -hmm. um, where, to your point, you know, government entities, DOTs, um, you know, engineers, they're, they're wanting these, they're specking these more and more, they're not going away. Um, you're just seeing them um, all over the country more and more. They're widely used, they're widely accepted, and they're much more trusted than they used to be. Nice, okay. Matt just celebrated his 10 year anniversary with Street Smart, and I'll put a plug in, but he honestly probably knows more about these things than anyone else in the industry, even down to the manufacturers. So he won't say it himself, but I will. Um, real quick, let's talk about some of this stuff. Um, back on the table. I'll let you hold this and I will hold this. Okay, so Matt, let's talk about what we have going on here. So, you know, as we talk a lot about the origins of the traffic signal and, and the, the original bread and butter of, you know, traffic signals and why they're built and lane closures, you know, as we've evolved over time, um, we've really turned these things into kind of a, a full intersection, you know, complete turnkey um, intersection control setup as well. So they can do anything from the most simplest back and forth lane closure scenarios all the way up to completely mimicking a full blown permanent style intersection. So what we're looking at is um, just one of the options that you know you could put on a, on a portable sig signal system and it's just a, a push button you know pet head crossing something you'd find very similar to what you'd see in a, in a permanent uh, intersection but just one of the many options that um, you know are being integrated into these portable signal systems nice um, what about this uh, additional signal head here what's that all about yep so uh, again in, in the theme of um, where the capabilities are going is we've got a left turn head set up, um, you know, again, for uh, s singling out those, those left turn movements and, and giving them their own movements. We can do that with video detection um, mm -hmm. uh, or just uh, any sort of actuation, um, Doppler, video, however it may be, depending on the setup. Okay. Um, emergency vehicles, how do they talk to these devices? Yep, um, you can also put in emergency vehicle preemption. Uh, it's mostly usually optical preemption that we're seeing and that's what uh, in most states you'll see that white light uh, flashing on top of the signal when the emergency vehicle comes through. Um, our systems are capable of that as well, so emergency vehicle preemption, uh, left turn head setups, um, ped crossing setups, uh, what am I missing? Video detection all the way around. Yep. True presence video detection. And what, what are we looking at here, finally? <laughs> uh, finally, something that um, is gaining a lot of traction uh, recently is the integration for a portable signal to 
uh, interact with a permanent system. And what I mean by that is, if you have a typical four-way uh, permanent signalized intersection, uh, and let's just say a truck, truck runs one over and knocks one of the poles down, um, we, can, we can put a portable in the permanence place that was knocked down, and basically we, we just use these boxes uh, one goes on the, the signal and one goes in the permanent uh, corner, street side corner box, and basically the portable becomes the dummy to the permanent timing. So essentially you loop it in there, you hook these boxes up, literally this is a five minute hook and go, um, and now you're basically replacing within minutes uh, a, a knockdown scenario, or maybe they're doing maintenance. They're taking one down at a time and they're painting, yep. uh, and, and they they shuffle that that trailer around the intersection. So okay. a lot of different uses for inter interconnectivity with permanence. Nice. So obviously we've covered a lot on these devices. Um, you can see Matt really knows his stuff. If you need more information, if you want to inquire about uh, renting these devices or purchasing them, uh, give us a call at Street Smart, and Matt or any one of our employees will take good care of you. Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.